Hey gearheads and welcome to Garage Talk. I'm Corey. I'm Holly. And behind us is the all new 2024 awaited return to the US market and the Toyota Land Cruiser. This thing shares a platform with the new Lexus GX. We are at the 2024 Chicago Auto Show and in this video, we'll take you on a tour. Stay tuned. Yes, gearheads, we are at the 2024 Chicago Auto Show where Toyota has finally brought the Land Cruiser out for me to check out. Unfortunately, this prototype is locked down. There's only so much I can do with it because it is still pre-production. So keep that in mind as we talk through some of the details on this one. It is a pre-production unit. When we peek inside, I'm sure that'll be where it is most obvious. But Holly, uh, let's talk first about the exterior styling of this. The front end kind of reminds me of a Toyota model that you previously looked at. What are your thoughts here on the front? Yeah, once upon a time when I was looking for my first vehicle, one car that I had my eye on was an FJ Cruiser. And I don't know if y'all are seeing what I'm seeing, but this <laughs> looks... Very reminiscent. Very similar to that, but I'll tell you what, I actually kind of like this one a little bit better than yeah. the Cruiser, um, just because maybe it's got a little bit of a smaller body style like going towards the back, but it still has that feeling, that fun, rugged look at the front. Yes, it does. So they very much meant to steal styling from the FJ Cruiser here on the front of uh, this Land Cruiser. There are three different trims of this available. The base model is the 1958. Then there is the Land Cruiser and then the Land Cruiser First Edition. That's a one year model year only uh, option. This is on the exact same platform as the Lexus GX I showed you uh, not that long ago from the Houston Auto Show. It shares the same platform, same 112 inch wheelbase, and it has better off-road dimensions than that Lexus. The approach angle is 31 degrees versus the GX is 26. The breakover is 25 degrees versus the GX is 23. And the departure, well, that's a little bit worse at 22 degrees versus the GX is 20. 23. We get 8.7 inches of ground clearance on this body on frame vehicle. This is built on the same platform as the new Tacoma of which we have right over there and another one back behind it. So everything that is good about that new Tacoma, everything that people love about that new Tacoma is baked into this as well. Uh, we get the same iForce Max powertrain underneath the hood. So this is a uh, turbocharged hybrid version of a four cylinder engine, making a decent amount of power while still being fairly efficient. So 326 horsepower and 465 pound feet of torque. Where that Lexus GX sister vehicle to this gets the 3.5 liter twin turbo V6 from the Tundra. This has to make do with a 2.4 liter four cylinder iForce Max found in the Tacoma. But as we come in close, you can see this one's got on-road focused tires. They aren't very off-road focused, uh, wrapped around uh, some aggressive black painted wheels. It is a nice look, but this is very much not the off-road focused trim. Uh, if you really want to do some land cruising, this probably isn't the trim for you. But as we come around to the side, Holly, what are your thoughts on the side profile of this vehicle? Because compared to the FJ Cruiser, which had like extended cab Life. truck doors back in the back, we get four real doors here on the GX. Right, I think there's um, some things I like and things I don't like as much. Um, this is a lot more of a smooth, profile yes. not a lot of curved more of a boxy style very um, in right now it's very in <laughs> very popular but i do like some of the accents like the gray stripes on the back the silver stripes yeah. and silver what stripes. about this yeah, one right here a little curve yeah I, those little accents give it a little bit more um, of a shape and interesting appeal to it, which I like that. So this actually separates the roof. If we did not have a black model here, we could get a black roof that contrasts against the overall body style of it. We're gonna peek in it 
In just a moment, this one, as you can see, it's a prototype, it is locked. We have permission to look inside here in just a moment, but I do wanna continue on our discussion of the exterior. This very much rides on the same platform as that GX, very boxy looking design. What's interesting to me is this is smaller than the outgoing Land Cruiser, which really was more Sequoia sized. This is more Toyota 4Runner sized, but so far, we have not gotten news on a 2025 updated 4Runner yet. 4Runner rides on the old Tacoma's platform. This rides on the new Tacoma's platform. So we're all like patiently wondering, what does this mean for the future of the 4Runner? We've got just behind us off camera here. But Holly, very boxy back end on this one as very well, right? Very boxy back end, yep. I mean, it actually kind of reminds me of a Land Rover. Yep. The back. Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, that is very much the vehicle that this I is going to be compared to. I bet it's more affordable than a Land Rover. Yes, though. it is. <laughs> but you can see back here, we've got this iForce Max badging. Just again, letting you know, it's got the turbocharged hybrid four cylinder in it. You do have a button right here to open up the rear glass. So you can toss some items back there, pull some items out without having to open the entire hatch. Unlike the outgoing GX, from Lexus, this is not a side hinge door. This is a traditional uh, rear hatch that does open up. Unfortunately, the rear hatch is the one thing we can't open up on this one, but we can open the doors and peek inside. But I need to go talk to my friend Bo with Toyota to get into this one because it is locked for the duration of the show. Let's take a look inside. All right, gearheads, we had our friend Bo open up this one for us. Unfortunately for you during the show, if you make it out here to Chicago, it will be locked. Again, this is the kind of base 1958 edition that they're expecting to start mid 50s, but none of that's been finalized as of yet. As we get into this one, I bring up the fact that this is the base model and it starts at mid 50s because we get cloth seats in here. It's nothing too spectacular on the inside, but uh, it's really kind of what you want and uh, nothing more. It, it gives you a nice uh, combination of uh, fit finish uh, without being too pricey. So I really do like that $55,000 price point for what is a very big boxy SUV. Uh, we do get a leather wrap steering wheel here. Very interesting, unique design. Holly, if you'll come in here and look, very kind of chunky boxy. That kind of goes with the chunky boxy exterior styling of this one. We do get a small full, uh, small digital screen here in the middle. It's really hard to see, uh, but this does not is not a full digital screen. It starts here and ends just over here with all your auxiliary lights around on the outside. We get some round AC vents to contrast all the boxy square designs on this. Toyota loves their buttons. They really love their buttons to the left of the steering wheel. We get a lot of them over here with a few poverty blanks, but again, this is the base model, so I'm not gonna complain too much, uh, but there you get your fuel door open. Uh, we do have some power back in the back, but I can't open the back to show you, and we get a trailer brake control. So this thing will tow, because again, it is using that uh, hybrid max powertrain one thing I want to call out about this front seat is it is a fully manual front seat. We have a manual slide, manual recline, and adjustments here for height adjustment. So I'm going to pop in one more time and show you there is a lot of maneuverability, but it is very quick and easy to do uh, to get into your perfect driving position, even tilt telescoping steering wheel here in this one. So very nice. And then the visibility out of it is very good as well. Very short dash, uh, very small square upright uh, glass here in front of me. Overall, a very good package up front here. Eight speed automatic transmission, a few different drive modes here. Electronic transfer case here. In this one, we have uh, four high and four low. So no two wheel drive on this one. You have a locking rear and a locking center diff even here on this base model. So a lot of good off-road tech uh, in this one that I appreciate couple cup holders forward and back and then we've got a uh, little bit of storage up here and around as well uh, heated front seats 
toggle controls for your uh, ventilation. Nice infotainment screen up here that does sit up a little higher, but again, it's a very boxy design in here. I'm gonna have Holly at five foot climb inside and show you uh, what it's like for somebody of all sizes to <laughs> climb in and get in. You can see they do give you a nice a nice pillar, <laughs> uh, a pillar handle. Not all automakers do that, especially yeah. in this midsize class. Uh, most expect you, I guess, to use the steering wheel. But I know you literally just climbed in to it. But what are your thoughts in there? Looking around, looking at fit and finish, uh, and then just the visibility out of this big box. Yeah, well, right off the bat, I like a lot of the rough um, edges. These seem like a really yeah. easy to clean. Not gloss black. <laughs> Not gloss black. I like that. And it's also kind of like shiny, so it yeah. doesn't look like doesn't uh, look cheap. cheap or anything yeah. like that. These seats are super comfy. Even though they are full cloth. Like, yeah. it is a very nice full cloth that reminds me very much of the cloth seats in the Toyota Crown XLE, which is mm -hmm. their base model. Toyota is really coming upscale, even in their lower offerings. Sure. But no sunroof in this one, so you get a nice, big, copious amount of headroom space, even with Holly at five foot. We'll now come around to the back. You can see we have a 60-40 split bench rear seat. It's currently folded. We'll fold it up here in a second. This is a two-row vehicle, no third row of seats, so you get a lot of storage back there in the back. I did say this shares a lot of components with the Lexus GX, which does get a third row seat, so you can see we do have cup holders back here. We've got USB-C power ports back here. Here as if there were a seat, but there is no seat back here. Again, this is the only way I'm going to show you the back here at the auto show simply because they don't have it uh, where we can open that power lift gate. I'm going to go ahead and lift up the split seats so that we can climb in. Holly, I'm going to let you climb in first and I will climb in after you uh, as we kind of look around at the storage here. Again, talking about ease of getting into a B-pillar mounted handle on this yes. one. And just like above it. your head over there, we have a handle on the ceiling. So that is nice. Uh, a nice touch as well. Again, full cloth seats here, back here, but a very nice texture to them. They do not feel cheap. They feel very premium. So that is a very nice touch. And I'm gonna go ahead and ask you, these are sitting upright currently. They are not reclined. It's very upright. <laughs> very upright. But look up above you. What do we have on the ceiling that you and I really oh, like yeah, up here? Yeah, we've got some air yeah, vents. I guess you can't recline these seats. Yes, you can. Um, I'm. Did you find it? No. Did you find it? No. Uh, I am looking for, here it is, right here oh. on the side. Uh, so you can recline it. She's going to ah, go ahead. There you go. There you go. That's the ticket. I'm going to climb in now next to her. We're going to talk about leg room back here. So this seat, uh, I feel, is pretty close to where I would sit normally. Uh, it is a little close, but I've got plenty of room back here. I'm I can't, I've got to recline. Uh, yeah. That is too upright. But it is a very nice back seat yeah. back here. The view, we're in a big box. We're in a big refrigerator box, <laughs> you uh, but it. you can really see out. I do like, we've got a nice little touch right here, Land Cruiser. This is gloss black plastic. That's a weird placement for it. But we get tri-zone climate control in this, even here on the space model. So uh, we pointed out those ceiling mounted vents on the sides, uh, but we have controls right there. Two USB-C power ports back here, a cigarette lighter style power port. I, I wonder how much longer those are gonna be in vehicles. Mm -hmm. Do people still use those when you've got USB-Cs galore? Uh, uh, wow, let us know do, in the do comments. You, do you still <laughs> use those? But as far as the backseat space goes, it's really good back here really easy for you to get in. I like the texture on this handle. It's like rubberized. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Any other thoughts from back here in the back seat of the Land Cruiser? I mean, even with my long legs, I have plenty of space. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a very comfortable vehicle, front and rear. I really like the amenities in here. It is a more premium off-road offering from Toyota, so that mid-50s price point seems about right. All of that is still to be finalized. A lot of the details on this vehicle are still being worked out and finalized. So we'll bring those to you as soon as we know. Uh, but I'm liking what I'm seeing here. As a former I, potential FJ yeah. customer, 
how, what are your final thoughts and impressions? I, I like how big it feels yeah. in here, especially the space back there. You could fit a lot back there, yes. especially since it's a boxier style. Yes. You could go really far up there. Yeah, so there's a lot to like here in this 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser. I keep wanting to call it the LC uh, because that's just how we shorthand abbreviate this. But this Land Cruiser, uh, it is a departure of the last one that we used to have that was more Sequoia based. Again, this one's more uh, Tacoma based, but there's a lot to like in this one, a lot to offer in this one, even in this base trim. This might be how I would spec it, honestly. It's, it's simple to the point, not a lot of frills, uh, but it gets the job done. That's about it for us here in the back seat of the Toyota Land Cruiser. If you want to see more from Holly, find her on Facebook and Instagram at Female Consumer. You can find all things GT Garage Talk at GT Garage Talk, Facebook, Instagram, X, uh, TikTok, Threads, YouTube, all at GT Garage Shock, or you can go to gtgaragetalk.com. But as for us, in the backseat of the 2024 Toyota Land Cruiser, until next time, gearheads, bye.